Hi there, my name is Mr. Code, and in this video we're going to talk about prefix codes. Before going into the details, let me first provide you with an overview of the things that we're going to talk about. So first of all, I will explain what prefix codes are, of course. And I will do so by explaining what they are, uh, why they are so important, and in what field, so where they are applied. Then we're going to do some exercises where you will master how to recognize prefix codes. So we're going to do this exercise together, which means that I will provide the answers to these exercises, of course, so that you can practice with this. And finally, we're going to have a little outlook where I refer to the graph Macmillan inequality, which is a nice subject to study after prefix codes. Let's start with explaining what prefix codes are. Now, we're going to do that with the following three questions. And in this part of the video, I'm going to try to convince you, if you weren't already convinced, that prefix codes are very important. And I will do that with these three questions. And you clicked on this video, so I'm pretty sure you already think that prefix codes are at least interesting. Um, but here I'm really going to show you that they are very important. So bear with me. So the first question is where do prefix codes occur? Then we're going to answer why are prefix codes so important? And finally, what are prefix codes? The last question is of course the most interesting one. But we're going to answer this question as the last question out of these three because there will be a nice transition between explaining prefix codes and then recognizing prefix codes which is the subject we're going to talk about after this okay so let's start with providing an answer to the first question which is where do prefix codes occur and this is going to be a relatively brief answer so prefix codes are part of the coding theory field which is a subfield in computer science, which is about inventing new codes and analyzing their performance. Now within coding theory, again, we have different subfields. We have the data compression field, which is also known as source coding, but there are other fields too, like cryptographical coding and error control, which is about error detection and correction codes. And of course, these coding fields can overlap. And prefix codes are mainly part of data compression. So now you have an idea of where prefix codes are applied within the computer science field. Let's now move on to the next question. Why are prefix codes so important? That's because of these two reasons. First of all, because prefix codes guarantee unique decodability. Besides, they guarantee instantaneous decoding. Let's look at each of these guarantees. So unique decodability is pretty much a must have in coding. Let's look at the following example. Imagine we have this code, we have the letters A, B, and C, and the code for A is 0, the code for B is 1, the code for C is 0, 0. Now with the following task, we have to decode 1, 0, 0. If you want to think about this first, you can pause the video, but I'm going to continue with the answer. So if you want to decode this, you will see that the 1 will be decoded as a B, the 0 uh, can be decoded as an A, the other zero can be decoded as an A as well. However, you can also note that one can be decoded as a B and the zero zero can be decoded as a C together. So is it BAA or BC? And now this is a bit frustrating. Which one of these two is the correct decoded string? You can probably imagine this is a very undesirable outcome. If we don't have one solution to the decoding problem, then we will have to choose and eventually errors will occur. So we don't want this. We want unique decodability. That's why it's pretty much must have for codes. And moving on to instantaneous decoding, which is a nice to have. So it's not a must have. Let's look at the following example to illustrate this. So here we have the code um, for A0, B01, C011. Now we have to decode the string 011. If you want to think about this first, please pause the video, but I'm going to answer this right now. So we will start from the left, from the zero. And knowing that the first bit is a zero, we know that there are three code words that correspond to this. So it can now either be A, B, or C. Now if we look at the next bit, we see that it is a one. So we now know that it will either be B or C. We now have one bit left, which is a one. So now we know that it is C, which means that there is only one option left and that we can decode the entire string as C. However, as you've probably noticed, we need to keep waiting or reading until another zero occurs. This is a bit annoying. What would have been desirable is that there would only be one option when we are reading this string and that we can directly decode this. 
So as soon as we read a zero here, we want to directly decode as an A because we know that this is an option that will work. And we don't want to read the rest of the string and still keep track of these options that are still possible. We just want to decode the parts that are directly decodable. Therefore, instantaneous decoding is not a must-have, but a nice-to-have. It, it still results in one option. However, it makes the decoding process a lot easier. So the beautiful thing about prefix codes is that they guarantee both unique decodability and instantaneous decoding. And these are some really useful guarantees to have. All right, so this answers the question, why are prefix codes so important? Well, because of these two guarantees, which are very useful within coding. Now that we have these answers to where prefix codes are applied and why they are so important, I think you will now better understand what prefix codes are. So let's look at a definition. So this is the definition. A prefix code is a code in which no code word is a prefix, or in other words, an initial segment, to another code word. And I've underlined the word no here, so no code word should be a prefix to another code word. If we look at this example code, we see that indeed there is no code word which is a prefix to another code word. So what is a prefix? For a prefix, we look at a substring of a code word starting from the most significant bit. And here we see that if we compare each code word to another code word, so we start with A, we see that it's not a prefix of B because B starts with a 1. It's also not a prefix to C because C also starts with a 1. And B can of course not be a prefix to C because they have the same lengths. Now if we look at the codes from the previous slides, we know that these didn't have unique decodability or they didn't have instantaneous decoding. So these codes were not prefix codes. And indeed, we see that 0 is a prefix to 00, zero. so A is a prefix to C. And if we look at this code, we see that 0 is a prefix to 01. 0 is also a prefix to 011. Also, 01 is a prefix to 011. So here there are multiple code words that are a prefix to another code word. Therefore, both of these codes are not prefix codes. Okay, so let's go back to the definition slide. So based on this definition, this term prefix code may be a bit of a strange name because a prefix code doesn't contain code words which are a prefix to another code word. So um, prefix codes are also known by different names, which may be a bit more logical. They're also known as prefix-free codes because there are no code words which are prefixes to other codes. They're also known as prefix condition codes. They're also known as instantaneous codes because in the previous slide, we've seen that they guarantee instantaneous decoding. And they're also known as Hoffman codes because of the Hoffman algorithm but I will leave the Hoffman algorithm for another video. Lastly, a very important remark is that fixed length codes are always prefix codes. So here we have an example of a fixed length code. Uh, we see that each code word has the same length. Therefore, this is a fixed length code. And of course, this is a prefix code because each code word has the same length as another code word. So 00, zero can never be the prefix of another code word because then we would end up with the same code word. So that's impossible. And therefore, fixed length codes are always prefix codes. Now, after this explanation, you may ask yourself the question, okay, cool, but is there an easy way to check for any code if it is a prefix code? Um, so this is an important question because as codes tend to become longer or more difficult, you would want an easy way to check whether a code is a prefix code. And the answer to this question, fortunately, is yes. If you draw its binary tree, and check if all code words are external nodes of the binary tree, in other words, the leaves, then you can conclude that this is a prefix code. So imagine that we have the following code. We're now going to check when this is a prefix code. So we start drawing our binary tree. We start with the root, and then we start from the most significant bit, which is the leftmost bit. We can go to the left, which is then zero for the most significant bit or to the right, which is a one. So if we go to the left, we have A because the code word is zero. If we go to the right and then to the left, we get B because we then have one, zero. If we go to the right here, we have one, one because C is one, one. So now we have our binary tree and we have to check whether all code words are external nodes. And indeed, every code word is a leaf of the binary tree. None of these code words are an internal node. Therefore, we can conclude that this is indeed a prefix code. All these code words appear at the bottom of this tree. 
That concludes our answer to the question, what are prefix codes? So now I think it's time to do some exercises together. I've prepared four exercises and the question for each of the exercises will be, is this a prefix code? Yes or no? And of course, it would also be nice if you have a reason for why this is a prefix code or not. I will provide these reasons, of course, in the answers. Let's start with the first exercise. Question is, is this a prefix code? Now, if you want to do the exercise on your own first, I think this would be nice. Please pause the video and if you're done, come back because then I will continue with answering the exercise. Okay, so the answer to the exercise is yes. This is a prefix code. And the reason for that is because this is a fixed length code. Each code word has the same length. For every code word, the length is two. And earlier in the video, we have seen that fixed length codes are always prefix codes because there's no way for a code word to be a prefix of another code word if they have all the same length. All right, so that's the answer. We don't have to draw a binary tree to check whether this is a prefix code. However, I like to draw binary trees, um, so I did it anyway. And a nice insight from this will emerge. Because if we draw the binary tree, we see that indeed all code words are external nodes and they end up at the bottom of the tree. And because they all have the same length, they will always have the same depth in the binary tree. And so that explains why they must all be leaves for the binary tree. And therefore it must always be a prefix code. So this is another way to explain that this is a prefix code. But again, if you see a fixed length code, you can directly state, okay, this must be a prefix code. Let's now go to the next question. And again, we have to answer the question, is this a prefix code? Note that this code is very similar to the previous code. We again have 00, 01, 10 and 11. The only code word that I've added is for letter A, which is now one. So previously we missed this code word. Okay, so if you want to do the exercise on your own first, you can pause the video, click on play again when you're done, because then I'm going to answer the exercise. So the answer to the exercise is no, this is not a prefix code, because one is a prefix to one zero, and one is also a prefix to one one. And if you look a bit more closely to this, you see that there is no unique decodability. I imagine that you want to decode the string one one, then you can either decode it as AA or as E. And again, this is very undesirable. So this is not a prefix code. If we draw the binary tree, B, C, D, and E end up at the bottom of the tree again, like also happened for the previous exercise. However, we also have this internal node A, which is at the right of the root, which is the code word one. And this clearly is an internal node. So this is not a prefix code. All right, so let's move on to the third question. Now we have the code where for letter A we have 0, for B, 0, 1, for C, 0, 1, 1, and for D, 0, 1, 1, 1. I think you already see a pattern here. Anyway, the question now again is, is this a prefix code? Again, if you want to think about this, please pause the video. I'm going to continue with the answer to the exercise. So the answer to the exercise is no, this is not a prefix code. If we look a bit more closely at the code again, we see that 0 is a prefix to 0, 01, 0 is also a prefix to 0, 01, 1, 0 is also a prefix to 0, 01, 1, 1. Besides, 0, 01 is a prefix to 0, 01, 1 and to 0, 01, 1, 1. And finally, we see that 0, 01, 1 is a prefix to 0, 01, 1, 1. So there are a lot of prefixes here. And if we draw the binary tree, we see something very interesting. So we see that A is an internal node, B is an internal node, and C is also an internal node. The only code word that is not an internal node is 0111. So this clearly is not a prefix code because we have three internal nodes and there shouldn't be any internal nodes. And if we look a bit more closely at this, we see that there is no instantaneous decoding because this code really resembles a code that we've seen earlier in the video which is this code, and the only code word that I've added is 0111. So for exactly the same reason, for this code, there cannot be any instantaneous decoding. All right, so let's go to the last question. We're almost done. So the code is now for A, 0, for B, 10, for C, 110, and for D, 111. Question is again, is this a prefix code? Now for the last time, if you want to try the exercise on your own first, please pause the video if you're done come back. I will now continue with the answer to the exercise. 
So the answer is yes, this is a prefix code. If we draw the binary tree, we see the following occur. We see that A, B, C, and D are the leaves of this binary tree. So these are all external nodes. And also if we look at the code, we see that no code word is a prefix to another code word. Okay, so these were the exercises. I think by now, if you understand each of the answers to these questions, you are a master of recognizing prefix codes. Okay, so let's go to the last part of this video, which is the Outlook. Now that you've studied what prefix codes are, you are able to explain them, you can recognize them. I think a next nice subject to look at is the Kraft Macmillan inequality. And the Kraft Macmillan inequality guarantees that if we have a unique decodable code that is not a prefix code, we can always find a prefix code with the same code word lengths. So we end up with some code which is uniquely decodable. We can then always find a prefix code with the same code word lengths. So this is very strong. So if you want to continue developing your knowledge on prefix codes, you should really have a look at this. I will upload a link as soon as possible about the Kraft Macmillan inequality so you can have a look at it. I think it would be really cool. To summarize, I have explained what prefix codes are by explaining where prefix codes are applied, why they are so important and what they are. Then we have done some exercises together on recognizing prefix codes. And finally, I provided you with a little outlook to have a look at. Okay, so that's it for the video. If you thought this video was useful, make sure to hit the thumbs up, give this video a like. If you still have any questions, make sure to use the comment section below. And if you want to see more of Mr. Code, make sure to subscribe. So stay cool. Bye.